we're celebrating Independence Day and in 19, and 1776 the Declaration of Independence was signed I want to read just a uh, portion of that 56 men signed the Declaration we hold these truths amen <laughs> We hold them, don't we? To be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. I don't think there was any question in any of those 56 men that signed that declaration of what they were talking about. And what you know in your heart we're talking about, amen? And they can't take that away no matter what they do. I'm so glad that our forefathers down through history did a tremendous amount of effort to engrave in stone exactly what we're talking about. That we are endowed, empowered, gifted by creator God with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, amen, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights... Governments are instituted among man, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. This was a declaration to England that we were making a declaration of what we knew to be true in our hearts and what we as Americans need to hold so strongly. Governments are instituted among man, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government. That, my friend, I think sums up what we're celebrating. And 56 of those who signed the Declaration of Independence, five signers were captured by the British as traitors and tortured before they died. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. Two lost their sons in the Revolutionary War. Another had two sons captured. Nine fought and died from wounds or hardships of the Revolutionary War. And this is re it behooves us as Americans, as Christians, that we remember and meditate and devote ourselves and make that declaration in our heart as best as we know how to seek and understand these truths and to live by them. I want you to turn in your Bibles today to Philippians 4. Um, I believe that just like our pilgrim forefathers, even way back to the Mayflower, which was hundreds of years before the signing of the Declaration of Independence, and even if you go back a little further to Columbus, and that striving to come to America and the setting up of a new government that many times, and there was many noble, I think Christians that felt like, no, this is not the thing to do, is to submit to England. But it rose in the, those colonists, our forefathers, that no matter what the cost, that they were going to establish a new government under God. And I want to encourage you that this is exactly what the church should be doing today. We are seeking to establish a new government under God. And, and it, no matter what it costs us, and I want to encourage you that the plight, the plan, the goal that they had was no worse by far than what we have today. They, what they, 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 it was a dream, amen? And I want to encourage you we cannot give up on that dream. And I want to encourage you that the Bible is very specific of what to do in any and every situation. The Holy Spirit is personally inside every Christian, encouraging them, directing them as to exactly what they do. The Apostle Paul was in jail by the government for his faith in Jesus Christ. Now listen to this. He, Paul, was in jail because he would not back down and he would not deny the truth that he knew in his heart 
And I want to let you know I believe God is calling every Christian, American, Mexican, German, I don't care what continent they are, to do the same thing, to be true to him. And I, I want to encourage you that I don't care how bleak it may get in your life, the cloud of oppression, the agony, the gloom, and, and I, I, I want to say something very clear. I believe according to how you suffer many times, to that same degree, God rewards you with more glory. In fact, there's a principle. Suffering, he gives you grace, and you accomplish glory by doing that. Isn't that good news, Miss Dorothy? <laughs> Maybe all that pain. How many know that all that, some of her pain and some of your pain? It's not in vain. I want to encourage you. We do not shrink back from living. Like, if you're going to love people, you're going to hurt. Hello? Are we going to stop loving so that we don't hurt? Never. It may be considered to be a hate crime for us to have our convictions, but it's, the last thing in our heart is going to be hate. It's not going to happen. Because the Spirit of God is going to empower us to tell the truth because love sometimes does what is almost impossible, the hard thing. I mean, good parenting is hard parenting. At least that's what my parents believed. And, to the, and of course, my brothers and sisters felt that they got soft on their seventh one and ruined him almost. <laughs> and it's hard to maintain strict, true, faithful love in the face of and, and, and this is my message today, is that I believe God's word has an encouraging word for you today in this situation that we find ourselves. And one of the primary things is, this is not the time to quit. All right, Philippians 4. In light of what I just said, what are we going to do? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. This is a little song. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, re but they just passed this law in the Supreme Court. No, no, that's not your issue. Rejoice in the Lord, but, but they got this flag down at the Capitol, and there's a big debate. No, 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 that's not your issue. Rejoice in the Lord. I, I just had knee surgery, and I'm in pain. I know rejoice in the Lord, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. I don't care what the despair or what the cost. I want to let you know they could be coming in here today and because of my stance in Jesus Christ, being there, carry me out and, and not just put me in some nice jail. That's not what they did to these signers of the declaration. Some of them they took out and they hung them for treason against England. I want to let you know, I believe the Lord's saying to me, it hurts. But rejoice in the Lord. Down in my heart, I know that they can do what they can. In fact, the entire message to the church as we look towards the end of this time frame of history is to look up for your redemption draweth nigh and count it joy that you have the privilege of being at this time a destiny that you are raised for this time that you could make a stand and make a difference in this world. You can do that. And there... And no matter what, they can take everything, everything that you hold joyful, this beautiful flag. How many know you stand in jeopardy of losing this? How many know Greece today, they may have to take, as it were, to, to disassociate their loyalty and their love for Greece to bow to the European market? And I don't know anything about that. I'm just saying that's a reality. How many know, uh, let's say, how many years ago was the Civil War? A hundred and something years. Good. That's, that's exactly what I'm looking for. How many of you know, right in this area, in Columbia, South Carolina, there was a man that stood with the loyalty to death to the Confederate flag? Things change. Loyalties change. How many of you know, someday we may not be able to honor this flag in America? In fact, I understand they're printing up money for the, the common market of uh, Americas, where they have Canada, America, and I'm speaking of things I don't know. I'm just, pro I'm just, pro I'm, there's the word, I'm prophesying to you things that might take place. But I want to let you know, the raising and lowering of flags hurts patriots to those causes. But we have a higher calling, friend, in the Lord. And I want to encourage you 
that if you get caught up in the, sun, the changing sands and winds of time, and I believe with all my heart we should be patriotic to death, and I, I am proud to say I served in the United States Army. And, well, I sometimes wonder if I'm proud about that, but anyway, <laughs> I was not a very good soldier, and I'll be first remote. But anyway, I want to encourage you that God would speak into your heart. You do not have the privilege of being letting Satan drag you down into deep depression over the loss of temporary human things. You can rise above it. In fact, one of the verses that so strikes me is that Jesus, suffering for his devotion and declaration to the Father, he died, and it says he endured for the joy set before him. He focused on that. One day I will sit on my throne, and I'll have Miss Betty and Robert and Miss Annis around my throne forever. And he, and he saw that joy, and he endured his hardship by that way. So that's what I want to encourage you that down in your heart, and, and weeping may endure for the night, and surely it will. All right, Philippians 4, verse 5, glory. In light of what's taking place in the world today, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Paul, writing from jail, wrote that. We are uh, on the 10th out of 17... I'm not sure what they call these individual things, of our Baptist faith and message, and we'll be doing that the next few weeks. The tenth one is the last things. The banner word, the Lord is at hand. I want to let you know the Lord is at hand. And no matter what happens to you on this physical earth, the last breath you have as a Christian, the next breath you'll be in his presence. And one of the first things he'll do is reach over and wipe the tears from your eyes. Now, how that happens is beyond my human understanding. How he is able to take all the sorrows associated with our allegiances here to earth, the things that we love, your, I'm thinking of your pets, our, uh, uh, your careers, everything that you hold dear. I want to let you know, friends, those, I hate to tell you those are all temporary here. Now, I don't have any doubt that maybe Renee and I will see our little puppy Prissy in heaven. I don't know about that. In fact, you know, I, I, God's a, God is going, anything that you can, if you can drink, he's able to do beyond anything you can think. So just take, go spread your thinking as far out as you can, and you're, you're about a tenth of the way, not even that far, to what we're talking about, the promises of God. Let your gentleness, I love one translation of this. If there was ever a word in our situations of going, the conflict that we face over sodomy, over race reconciliation, let your sweet reasonableness be known to every person. You're not, don't be drugged into, let me, let me let you know, if you get all wrapped up and stirred up because someone scratched your car, the problem is not that person that doesn't take any respect for your new hot rod. The problem is you hit, sitting beside the wheel. Hello? Now, I, don't, I believe that you can be hurt if somebody messes up something that you love. If your neighbor shoots your puppy, I believe you can be hurt. But I want to encourage you, it is not allowable for you to become dysfunctional because of the sorrow of this world or to retaliate in hate towards those who have treated you wrong. I believe that's what it's saying. Let your moderation, one translation, be known to all men, the Lord is at hand. And I, I believe the Satan want, Satan, I believe with all my heart, Satan wanted some of the ugliness that we associate with the KKK, that was the whole plan of what took place down in Charleston of killing those nine people. That was Satan's plan. But thank God, God's people can respond differently. Hallelujah. Amen. We're, not, we're not caught up into that. We are not insane in hate. Hallelujah. I said we are not insane in hate. Amen. And I, I believe, I love that our two Air Force guys stand up. I believe one of the things a military person is, I'm not out there acting in vengeance and hatefulness. And I, one of the, I want to, I want to let you know something. I have this Confederate flag. I, I was born and raised in Greenville, 
but both of my parents are those blankety-blank Yankees from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. But let me encourage you with one little thought. Both of them were raised Mennonites. Many Mennonites, because of them being conscientious objectors, and they, the only, and in fact, I'm not even sure that they even to defend their household, but they do not believe they should go to war, period. During your ancestors were being shot at by those blankety blank Yankees, the, after the thing, they would go down the line and they would fill the muzzles of those Yankee soldiers. And when they came up on a minute night, that barrel was dead cold. That officer would pull out his pistol and kill that person for treason right there. I want to let you know, if you take a stand for Christ, it will cost you. But the eternal rewards are out of this world. And I just want to encourage you. We are not allowed to step out of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, and so forth, under any circumstances. And when you find yourself moving out from under the Spirit of God, you are on your own, friend. You cannot have all the benefits that come to you through Jesus. Let your sweet reasonable be known to all men. The Lord is hand. Now, I want to be crystal clear, and my conviction is someone comes into my house there in Moss Creek, bearing a gun, wanting to harm Renee, I don't have a question in my mind what to do. I go digging through my closet, find that highway patrol revolver, <laughs> wherever it is, <laughs> and take a quick lesson on how this thing work. But I, I just want to be clear, I, it's not a question to me like if we see one of our Gavin, someone attacking Gavin. It's, I don't have to think twice about what to do. I put my life in jeopardy to save those around me. Amen? Okay, Philippians 4, verse 6. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're a Christian? Amen. Be anxious for nothing. You know when you're going over out of this commandment. It's not an option. If you have got stirred up over what took place in Charleston, over a flag on the Capitol grounds, or what a Supreme Court decision if you have become overly anxious on it let me tell you what the problem is not the supreme court you go look in the mirror there's the problem and I, let me tell you i've been doing that i am going back to read a book by charles finney called the lectures on revival and i read that i tried to read that at least 20 or 30 years ago and i got stopped exactly where i am right now a thing of going through repentance of being ungrateful is the first thing it's he says sit down and see all the ungratefulness how you have insulted the goodness of God because you're ungrateful and one of the things is the Lord showed me I, I want you to go down this path of repentance but every time I want you to come back to me and let me put the joy of the Lord in your heart now sometimes God will not give that to you unless you do the complete repentance thing and if you're um, ate up with anxieties and worries then God cannot bring the joy of the Lord and there's a supernatural thing it's a science it's a privilege it's a it, it, it'll work like a law that if you will get this right God will restore you and I believe many times the church is holding up a revival in America because the problem is not in the Supreme Court the problem is right up and down these halls and down in these pews amen and up in this pulpit. Ouch. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I am so excited about our prayer on Wednesday night. I want it to become more fervent. I, I, I believe God want, I want to encourage you. When you get pushed into the corner, we've got something going on Wednesday night that just may be your solution. Now, I would rather you get this problem fixed before we get in such desperation that we are in jail and being hung and so forth. Amen? But I want to, I believe God's calling his people to prayer. And how many of you know you are not, you, we are not praying like we should? We are drawn away by a thousand things. You know, I, I'm as guilty as sin. I got on my digital video recorder, I got Wilmington, uh, what's the tennis thing? The tennis thing in England. <laughs> You tell I'm real enthusiastic about that. I got NASCAR all set up to record and the ladies' soccer coming on. How many of you know if I get so devoted to that that I neglect prayer, there's a problem in the Eshelman household and it's not back in Renee's studio? 
I don't think. <laughs> With thanksgiving. And, and this was, I want to come back to this. This is the first place the Lord has taken me in this revival, is that my heart having thanksgiving. And I want to let you know I stand here today beside this flag. I'm wearing a flag, and I am so very thankful that I'm an American. I am so very glad and thankful that I was born in South Carolina. I want to let you know I am so thankful to be the pastor of Bethlehem. You, we, this is a beautiful congregation, and I stand here. I am full of gratitude and thanksgiving. God has been so good to me. Let your request be made known to God. And you have to continue doing this until this happens. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, you're there trying.